The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors NAD has embarked on a seven-day warning strike over the adoption of their colleague, Dr. Ganias Popula, who has been kidnapped or been in kidnappers' den for eight months. The president of NAD, Dr. Dele Abdullahi, announced the strike during a virtual emergency meeting of the National Executive Council that was held on Sunday. Abdullahi said that the strike, which commenced at midnight on Monday, August 26, 2024, that was yesterday, is a warning, but total in effect. Now, the strike is total, and there will be no concessions or emergency care during this period. All centers, both federal and state, should ensure full compliance, even as proper handover of patients to consultants should be done. Any center found to have defaulted in the decision of NAD would be fined heavily and denied participation in the forthcoming NAD AGM. A registrar in the Department of Ophthalmology at the National Eye Center, Kaduna, Popula was adopted on December 27, 2023, along with her husband and nephew. Now, her husband was released in March, while she and her nephew have remained in captivity. And members of NAD had earlier protested in all tertiary hospitals across the nation to demand her release. But at the moment, she's still in kidnappers then. They have told us and they have stated that they would not take in any emergency cases at this point, and only God knows. But yes, um, Frank, let's hear you on the story. As you see, I am also worried. Somebody adopted since kidnapped. You know, they are using the word adoption as if uh, we are playing with the, with, 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 the, with the serious crime against human life. The person was kidnapped since December 2023 with, with her family. And now, after about maybe four months, our husband was released. Money was paid. You can imagine about is it three weeks ago, many good doc <coughs> uh, students, uh, doctors were also uh, kidnapped. Yes. But thank God for the effort of the police mm. to rescue them. I say about 20 of them. Now, I feel the way it is that if you have your tool to work for your freedom, do it. What do you mean by have your two tools? That's what I mean. That's the, the, this is what the, that what the medical doctors are doing. What is that? The life of that woman. The government cannot do anything about her, about it. The only way to touch the government, to wake up to fight for that woman, is to withdraw the services. But the moment I saw Nigerians also, who are not feeling that somebody is in the hand is, is like it was eating day, mm. day of kidnappers. Mm. A day is for lion. Oh, we know that. That's my little story. A day for lion, and now somebody is in the den of human beings. <clears throat> we don't talk about the, 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 the abuse. For Sorry. Eight, for eight months. We don't talk about the abuse. So we are only talking about the, our freedom. Sorry, I, I, nobody should be, should, should be prayed to be kidnapped. But now we even talk about, oh, let her be released. We don't know what is, what is, if she doesn't have right. Whatever does we want her to do. Is what she will do. So I feel that the doctors are right to threaten the government to do something. Like I heard yesterday that the UPT has, uh, has, has joined the strike yesterday, as of yesterday. Yeah, there was so for me, I feel that the government wants to see something before they take action. Mind you, the kidnappers are communicating. They use what we call today. MTN, uh, all these uh, they talk of uh, uh, oppression, oppression to also bargain for ransom. So what stops the high intelligence agency in Nigeria not to get to, to, to the root until we now go on a, a, a protest, until now go on strike, and some innocent citizen will now die. Right. Who are the people who are seeking for medical attention? You know, especially when we look at emergency cases now, don't you, don't you, do you, do you see this as extreme? If I see that as what? Well. Extreme. You know, um, the first story you took, we're talking about um, how uh, prison congestion. How can they congest the prison? Now, and what people are passing through in that area. You call it correctional center, I'm calling it prison now. And whatever it is, whatever name it is. You know, if people like 
those who have kidnapped this lady are now being taken to that area. We also start agitating for the welfare of that area. We start agitating. If, let's say they are taken to these correctional centers, and then maybe they are going through torture, they are going through hell in that area. We, are we also going to be agitating that, ah, the welfare of those in the correctional areas, they shouldn't also, uh, please, let's do it very well. He mentioned what the torture that lady might be going in there, mm. or might be going through in that area. Now, if they get to that correctional area, uh, centers, and now faces a little of that uh, torture, these same persons who kidnapped this woman, you see your star shouting, oh, they are, they are going through hell. So are you, saying, are you saying that people in the correctional center should not, their welfare should not be considered? No, what I'm saying is if people, this kind of persons that took this lady, are now being arrested and taken to correctional center. I don't know if they should also bring out their own aspects and then keep them in area where they should now face the torture. The same torture they are making somebody go through in that, in whatever they describe as them. Now, if they are caught and taken to correctional centers, so should you also, this is also another aspect of it, should you also start to say, ah, what is happening there, that area is not that's, good. That's and they don't even you. consider that somebody is in the bush. You're torturing the woman in the bush. Then when they bring you out to a, 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 a building and you don't see food, you're crying. So what is not good for Mr. A shouldn't also be good for Mr. B. You know, this is a point that you are you are talking about now. You are actually bringing this up. Should we not take care of people in the correctional sense? Should their welfare not be considered? I, I, I think, are they not still citizens of this country? Yeah, and, and I think what takes people to prison, unfortunately, some persons are not guilty. Exactly. When we look at our system, that's why I said. That's why I that. said there should also be need to separate some crimes. Some of these persons, you've been caught. You've kidnapped somebody, like what is happening now? And then somebody is being taken to the same area with somebody whom maybe probably is he, just being alleged. Or stole his mother's pot of soup. Good, and now he's kept in the century. same place. And that's why we are agitating for the <laughs> welfare of that correctional center. Yes. Do you understand? Because what you are making that woman go through, just don't see food for 24 hours. They are crying. Please, it is very wrong for that lady to be there. And I also want to go in this angle. That lady has been kidnapped. That is, that is not up to 1% of what is going on in this country. So many persons are being kidnapped and held in different places. The government seems to, I don't know if they are trying their best, but their best is not enough. Why are we going through this? Why are humans going through this? Those who are involved in this business, why are they making people go through this torture? You're looking for money. And those persons you kidnapped, are they not so in this economy suffering sentence? Then another angle to it. How come the husband was released and the he woman was, was not released? The, the man was not was sick, actually. He was taken allowed? from the hospital. So he was sick. According to reports, his, his medical condition was getting worse. So they had to release him. Then, uh, even if that's sick, we're discussing something that is so troublesome. So worrisome. Somebody, about three, I don't know, report three persons of the same family yes. were kidnapped. And because of the horrible, horrible health nature of the, the husband, they released her. I mean, they released, they, they released him. Now, our concern is that the government shouldn't even wait, like we are discussing, as we're discussing, apart from this, uh, uh, this high profile uh, kidnapping case we are discussing now. There are over 1,000 Nigerians in the enclaves of kidnappers or bandits in the various uh, forests or bushes across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Now, as we're discussing, but the slow pace of tackling it is a problem. Is it the slow pace of tackling it? Yes. Or is it, do you don't think our security agencies have problems that could have limited? you know them from getting this thing let from. me tell you there's no problem because if i am as i'm going to you now if i commit a crime against and just state now it will not take it will not take 25 hours for me to be arrested even if you're not in nigeria they'll bring you back they'll bring me back i don't know what i'm saying they'll follow they'll interpol this and that and they'll bring me back 
See, there's a higher level of conspiracy or sabotage in what is happening. Sorry. That's what you think. That's what I'm thinking, yes. Okay. Because but, they are using networks. See, there's some, do you know, some people's call uh, are being monitored. Of course, it's possible. So what stops the the the, 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 the DSS? What stops the telecommunication? And what's the that we call in the, in the name of intelligence gathering to provide some calls? Even coded call that is about a kidnapping, how to pay ransom. But this will, as we are discussing, they use they use data to communicate. I hear it. And they will dribble you. I, I was involved in one when we were at to pay ransom. Hey, stop here. When you stop, they say, we see you, we see you. People are there. They will give you another, another location. That's what they do. You, can, you cannot just take ransom to a particular place and pay making. They will dribble you, take you around until you drop. You will not know the person that will carry the money. So this is done using telecommunication. Today we are all of us have registered and was oh, if you don't leave your name, if you don't leave your BBN, there is still fraud using the internet. Yes, you see, no, it's trying to, police is trying, let's not condemn that they're not doing anything. But the slow pace in containing the excesses of criminal elements in this country is also giving room for people to still indulge in such criminal activities. But today, can you imagine what happened in Abuja? Was it about three months ago or four months ago? Where a family was kidnapped of guests and they said pay a sum of 60 million. And in delaying the payment, they killed one of them and increased the ransom to how much? 100 million. So they made money. Like the front government of Rivers, they say that uh, uh, kidnapping has become uh, lucrative. So, so young men, they don't want to call Yahoo, 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 Yahoo. So, but because, oh, this crime. It's paying, it's paying money. And government is not doing anything uh, substantial to stop it or to reduce it. Kidnapping today has become like a market that is difficult for the government to cross. You know, when we talk about the economic situation in Nigeria, these are some of the things that we are talking about. When there is an issue with the economy, when people are finding it difficult to purchase goods and services, when there is an increase in the prices of all of these things, it gets to affect crime because crime would definitely increase. Imagine we have had all of this around us and now, yes, Dandy. Let me say this. Um, I, I may differ a bit from pointing out that the security agency may not have challenges. Okay. They may. In fact, they are human. They also need to be alive. And they're in the system. Yeah, they're in the, they also need to be alive to be able to carry out their duty. Some of the challenges could just be that, let's say um, he was complaining of his account being hacked today, or yesterday, actually. Then, anybody who hacked that could use it for something else. Yes. And all that. Uh, now, Bodo, I also accept the fact that it's easy to track whomsoever that is on call. It's yeah. easy. Now, I also agree to the fact that if the security agency wants to get somebody within 24 hours, they can. All things being equal, if whatsoever that is required to carry out this job effectively provided. is being provided yeah. to them. Then the other part I want to point out very clearly, the doctors have not gone on strike. We are trying to save a woman that was being kidnapped. Good. It's also bad to do, which we have pointed out. But now you've gone on strike. I was at UPTH yesterday. And then you've gone on strike. There are so many persons that are facing death um, challenges. They are, they are almost dying. And you abandon them. Okay, they stated, they stated that um, they would do a proper handover to consultants. I mean, I mean, have, you, have you been to the hospital I'm waiting for a consultant? I'm not I'm not them. Have you been? Do you know what we call consultant? Is like we are waiting for the governor to call to arrive here. And then you wait 
people will sing, people will dance a song. Sir, sir, sometimes they'll have that. to give you a date where the consultant and will come. And then, and then when you sometimes <laughs> you have to wait. Aside the fact that you have to wait for the consultant, mm -hmm. if you are not able to see the consultant that day, they'll give you another date. It and that mean, might be like two weeks. It, it also comes to for, for <laughs> the consultant to change their pattern. Aside that, are the consultants even enough? That's another they question. Are, no, they are not. They are not. They are not. And let me also tell you that we're discussing security. You see, government can fight it. That's why now I'm not in support of the strike because of the issue of health. Let's not be frank. There are some, there are just some one that is always that is, and, and, and the health challenge now will be just to, to prescribe drug can save that person. But now if you go there, nobody is there to prescribe, only drug for you. And you go home, guys, you know, come tomorrow, come tomorrow, it's not easy, it's about head, it's not easy. Like what, the, the, the level taking to, to, to rescue the to, to, to student doctors, they say they use three helicopters. That's what I gathered, to fight the criminals. Some of them were also killed uh, by virtue of uh, mm. a combat. Can, can they use such uh, power? We combat forces of the, of the uh, armed forces. And go come the, the, the any place that is uh, that that is like uh, that the out out. But these people, like all of us are discussing, they make phone calls. They they go out to buy food. Whether I think they they, 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 they normally feed uh, their victims with uh, indomie. There are people who supply them all these things. Even the guns they are carrying, they go they also supply them bullets. So I want to pray that, please, apart from this uh, protest or strike. Mm. To demand the release of their of their member, let the government also look at it because it, this will also make some innocent Nigerians True. to die. Mm. I am not saying that. Talking about not even get not taking in emergency cases, that is an emergency case on its own. Uh, we would have women who would want to give birth, who have uh, women exactly. who are in labor, who exactly. would have exactly. accident so victims, who have accident victims. And that, that's what we're trying to save one. We're cases. trying to save one person. And then if we that's lose this person... I ask you if you don't think this measure is extreme. Nobody is talking it is, about it, that. It, 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 for personal reasons, it is. Now, if we lose, if there are some persons... I, I got to UPT yesterday. I saw somebody who just stood up with... It's as if he had drip or something. He was still carrying that and was walking out. Now, if this person loses his life, and after one week you call back the strike, who restores that life? It's gone. Who restores? And people need to be paid. People need to start paying for what they've committed. Who? Okay, we're trying so who to. Who pays for this now? That's the issue. The doctor who who have abstained from duty. Of course, we know that most of them will go to their private hospitals. They, they, of they say that the that government, the government, and, the government private, and all of the hospitals should be shut down. The government should also be held responsible. Oh, yeah. Why must why must they go on strike before the right thing is being done in this country? That, that, that's, that's another that's question. That's issue. Then why would we allow people to die, and then later we we'll come back the strike and come back? Oh, wonder, in fact, I was even almost very, I was sad yesterday. I, I wanted to approach the, the, the doctor. And he was rejoicing. Ah, we have been rele relieved of duty for Aww. one week and all that and all that. I looked at him. I looked at him again. I said, let me just go my way. And you can imagine. So if anybody dies, who restores the person when you're back from your strike? And if nothing happens, are we going to... Why not all of them should protest to Asrock? Why are they even holding... Why are they relaxing? Let them protest to Asrock. Let the president see. Now, the president's child, if the president's child is sick... Will the president try to go and call the resident doctors? So who will suffer this sentence? The masses. You know, that's another thing. When they say man's inhumanity to man, not to judge the doctors now, but I'm just making a statement now. When people say, when, when um, crimes are committed, and then people say you are angry with the government, but you're going to the street to kidnap another human, another, another citizen, uh -huh. who is also going through the same economic issues that you are going through. So why exactly are you doing that? Uh, uh, let me tell you something. The purpose of government is to address every inadequacies of the citizens. And that's why you see government is like working in other crime. But here it's like government, people, people uh, will now go for self-help. That, that's what we are trying to do. Like for those of us, maybe in the church, they say that kill people, they, they now, the church is now to take arms. How oh, does the church take arms? But somebody is taking arms to the church to kill. 
Nobody, nobody, nobody is working. advising anybody to take up arms. No, that's what I'm saying. Because what the doctors are now, are now doing now as self help to protect themselves, because this will now touch the government. They will have swung into action when the report was made that a doctor was kidnapped hmm. with his family, with her family, and up to now, is still there for about going to one year now. And we are just saying it doesn't matter. See, no life is important, and no life is so inferior. Every no, life, no, is no life, so no life is unimportant. That mean. is it. Hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that, like, if you kill one American today, they will look for it. They look for their life. They will look who is responsible. But yeah, you know what? How many people? Were, how many people were killed? Oh, only two. Ah, uh, I thought. It and it will take time for the government to be proactive. Sure. So my concern is that, as the doctors are out to put, to go on strike, what will be the effect of the patients or the sick who will want to go to where things are cheap? Because today, if you go to a private hospital now. Do, to do a, a little surgery, surgical operation. They want a private, if they're telling you 200,000 in the government home, let's say it can be a difference of 100,000. 100, so I don't pray that government should, be, should also call the doctors. All right. That's a, a way of solving the problem. Government should call the doctors and also be proactive to say, rescue the woman. Hmm. As, so, as you say, you want to add to that form of the next story. Okay, in whatever, 30 seconds. Or, or whatever it is, please. The woman is not supposed to die. The woman is not supposed to be kidnapped. Those at the hospital are not also supposed to die. The patients at the hospital are not also supposed to die. The doctors should understand this. All the right. military, do they also go and strike whenever somebody is killed? Not to, not to say, yeah, is going and all that. So the government should also be up and doing. Thank Very you so important. much for that. Let's look at the petroleum industry now. Um, Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission has defended its regulatory processes following criticism from former Vice President Atiku Abubakar regarding recent oil and gas divestment by international oil companies, including Oando and Seplet. Now, in a detailed response on Monday, the head of public affairs unit of NUPRC, Mrs. Olaide Shonola, emphasized that all divestment approvals, particularly those involving Oando and Seplet, were conducted with full compliance to the Petroleum Industry Act 2021 and established regulatory frameworks. The commission has been thorough in adhering to the legal and procedural uh, requirements set by the PIA, ensuring transparency and accountability at every step. Now, Atiku, who was the presidential candidate for the People's Democratic Party in 2023, had earlier raised concerns about what he perceived as expedited approvals granted to Ando, um, a company that is linked to a relative of President Bola Tinubu to acquire onshore assets from Ajip and Eni. Now, Atiku challenged the All Progressives Congress-led federal government to clarify the process, suggesting that it may be influenced by political connections in its response. First, the NEPRC reiterated its commitment to transparency and fairness in its oversight of Nigeria's oil and gas sector. Dandy. <laughs> well, uh, let me go with that article. Was it not fastly done? Was it not quickly approved? Considering this and then the uh, issue of minimum wage agitation, what happened? It lingered meetings upon meetings. We saw it. We only had news it has, it has been taken over and all that. So was it not? It went as far as the way the national anthem went and all that. So again, ASO, is, ASO has been threatening to go and strike. And so that before, before we go to ASO now, before we con conclude that it was done so quickly, mm -hmm. you know, we also need to look at other times when such was done. Was it slower? Is this faster? You know, you need to make comparisons before you can conclude that, oh, this one was so swift. No, other, why, that's why I mentioned the national handle was fast. No, other, other, other cases that have to do with the petroleum industry. The, 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 the petroleum industry bill. Uh, the petroleum industry. So you need to see. Okay. But this was so fast. It was sweet. Very easy. Yeah, took, and all that. And all that. So in, in whatever, whatever it has to do with what affects the masses. Okay. We begin to draw feet with lingers and all that. Mm. In fact, we it, it took Nigerians to agitate 
for a better standard of living. Ten days protest. What, what happened? The, what was the result? We are battling with inflation. Has it been fastly tackled? Well, now that has to do with individual businesses, one company taking it, it has been fast, so fast, and all that. So let's also take the way, the strength, the energy, the transparency according to what they are telling us. Let's take this transparency towards a, a better standard of living for the masses. This is my opinion. <laughs> All right. All right, Dandy, thank you very much. But you don't think that uh, looking at this is just Nigerians, whenever it has to do with, I thought we, we, we should be looking at competence. Because whenever it has to do with a relative or uh, of a politician or someone who is in power, we already begin to feel like that company is not competent enough. You know, we, uh, do we, nobody is even crying whether it's competent or not. Do we not know who and do? Are we even saying it's not competent? They are telling us that they, 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 it was transparent. They said transparency was involved in it. Then what we are also saying, that the way you did this so fast, All right. and we've been battling with inflation, please, can you come up with the same transparency and be fast okay. to tackle it? Let's hear it, Frank. Article <coughs> suspicion is in order. See, like my brother just said, there's something that will involve the public, the masses, so to say, in this country. It will go to the, the delayed sec first reading, the delayed second reading. The, I mean, the law, they will delay the, 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 the reading <laughs> that will take them uh, maybe two days to do what belongs to those highly influential in the government in a space of three hours. But when it concerns the public, it takes them years. Like what are the talking about the issue of electoral laws, the, the amended electoral law of 2022. You know how long it has taken them? Do this, do that. Oh, something is missing. But this part, this one is about, mind you, why we are also talking about the economy of this country. If we get it right in our oil sector, NPC, Nigeria will get right. So that is a, that's the worry. We are not seeing, we are not refining our crude oil in Nigeria. And a, a private entity has taken over from multinational. We are talking about, about three or four selling assets to somebody who is also close to the corridor of power. And we are saying transparency, as we are saying due process. We are talking of what is affecting the livelihood of Nigerians. Mind you, just within about two days ago, I was told that by the federal government that NNPC does not have money to fix our pipes, oil pipes. It's the government cannot fix our... And now this, this is one of the assets in oil sector that have been given, have been maybe sold to an individual that we was perceived to have link to the presidency. You know, today we have presidency in Nigeria and we have president in Nigeria. So let me say presidency, not president now. So it is something that we need to be careful the way we go about selling or being fast to divert attention from the readings. Article for me was curious, as I am too, because my first I've sent letters to Asarok, to ministries in Nigeria, to uh, commissioners in Nigeria, without getting ordinary reply to today. Sorry, I know what I'm saying. But today, somebody is buying asset worth billions of dollars, not Naira. And it took almost uh, like a win, a speed of light. To have concluded every arrangement, and someone is coming to tell Nigerians that it was quoting the law. They will always quote the law because the laws in this country are made for the poor. So that is what why we are also worried. Oh. Ordinarily, the public should know. But oil today is what is affecting my coming here today. I saw crews living in NPC privilege station more than if I look at the, 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 the distance, more than 300 meters. I mean, crews. Four line 
In the country that is producing oil, and now what we're producing now is shady pro process. They are going to uh, explain to Nigeria that we, it, we took uh, a due process, transparent process, and I will clap for them. What do we need to get it right in our petroleum industry? Well, we need to get it right. <laughs> Stay away from corruption. Just stay away from corruption. Is Treat it everybody possible equal. to completely eradicate corruption? At least so you can reduce corruption. You can reduce. And you can't even keep allowing it to increase. Weight. In fact, it's becoming more obvious. But whatever it is, if the government have taken this step, maybe they say they want to encourage a private sector. The other side is, well, Dan Gote is also suffering. Suffering going through one thing and another. The other persons in that oil sector that has been going through one thing or the other, and this is also this one went so smoothly. So if you want to encourage private sector participation, encourage all the private sectors, encourage them, give them in, involve this in transparency. Some you want to tell us that the other persons we are not transparent. You found this one transparent, and that's why he's bringing. But they're telling us it's the process that was transparent. The, the, the process, the other person's that process. That there's nothing fishy about. No, if the other person are they telling us that of Dangote there is something fishy? Are they telling us that the other persons who have applied in this oil sector are also having something fishy? So say it out. Let it out. Let Nigerians know. If not, you attract more criticism the way it's been. Thank done. you so much, Dandy. Thank you, Frank. Let's take some time off now.